Welcome to Keeping Squirtle. Mark Rogers here with Jeff Murray. He is the past president of the Oklahoma City Metro uh, uh, Officials Association. I got that right? Right. I got that right in order. Official Association. Can I call you Jeff the Ref? Yeah, that's fine. That okay, works. that's good. Uh, we got to talk about referees because there is a massive shortage. Uh, a lot of reasons for that, but. A lot of people can stay in touch with the game, and I know how much you uh, enjoy officiating and how rewarding it is for you to be a part of uh, the great action that's going oh, yeah. on like, behind us here in high school sports. Yeah, I mean, it, well, I appreciate you sitting down with you today, but, yeah, we need lots of good young people. This is my 33rd year of high school football, and, you know, I've had the same 12 guys in my crew for – or same five guys for 12 years, and we need good young people, and so we've got to find a way to get those people involved. Okay. If someone's intimidated, say, by learning all of the rules because it becomes very difficult to do that, you're on a crew, uh, you're going to have people help you. Is that something yes. that you should how, – how much time do you have to put in and focus on picking up the game and the differences between high well, school, I mean, college, and professional? The majority of our guys in our association played high school football. And something like the guy on my football crew, Gary Lewis, he played in the CFL and NFL. Sure. And they just have a lot of experience and knowledge, but – the we're not going to overload a kid in the first year, you know, to learn how to referee football. You take small increment steps to learn the rules, and we're going to try to protect that guy for the first one or two years till he really gets comfortable and gets more familiar with what he's doing. All right. So if you're sitting out there and you think to yourself, I, I don't know all the rules, probably can't learn all the rules in a couple of weeks. Uh, and we're not saying you don't need to know the I, rules, but it's a gradual I, adjustment, right? This is my 33rd year. And I try to learn something new every year. Right. You always dig deep in the rule book and find something that you may not know. Or we all have our strengths and weaknesses, but you've got to find that one guy in your crew who's a solid rules guy. But everyone should know the rules and just take small baby steps till you get comfortable with it. Yeah. I mean, don't let that keep you away from, no, uh, from signing not. up. Definitely. We will help you. Uh, you know, a lot of high school athletes don't go on to play at the next level, uh, play collegiately right. like Gary did yeah. or play in the pros. But it is a great way, if you miss the excitement of Friday Night Lights, to be able to participate because you guys get all the feels and the goosebumps and the chills of the big game oh, out there, absolutely. right? Absolutely. I mean, some of the some of the games, the athletes, I mean, I've gotten to see Wes Walker play, the, the Woods Brothers from John Marshall. I mean, there's some the Barry Sanders, some Heritage Hall, uh, really some tremendous athletes. The Oklahoma State, the state of Oklahoma has produced some tremendous players. And to be part of that, you know, I knew my, my – Playing career was over when Coach Estes told me, he said, Murray, you run like a dry creek. So <laughs> I had to find a way to stay involved, and this is really a I, – I never had any idea I would still be doing this today. All right, if, if what's the best way to maybe perhaps kind of gear up uh, to do that, handbooks to read, things like that, and then also tell us where you can go to sign up? Yeah, the secondary schools, OSAA has their website. You can go to their uh, officials link and get all the information about how to register, and they're doing some things to – lower the cost for the first year, second year guys. And because, uh, you know, especially in baseball, if you umpire a lot of baseball, the gear and the equipment, that's expensive if you're a first year guy. And if you stick with it a year or two, you've got to put that outlay of money and it adds up. Uh, how many? Yes, the secondary schools has a website, the OSAA, and then our OK, OKC Metro officials has a website. And then the uh, National Association of Sports Officials has a link where you can go to any state, and it'll take you right to the information you need to find out. All right, very good. How many officials are out here today? Oh, gosh, I think we had 78 sign up right. to come out and help with this today. So um, it's now becoming just like for the athletes, it's becoming a year-round yeah. job oh, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, especially, I mean, if you work basketball, you can work year-round in basketball anymore, which, you know, that gets to be a grind. But uh, football, you can work a JV freshman game on a Monday night. Tuesday, you can work a junior high game. And that's where the young guys really get their experience and get the feel where we'll put two young guys with a couple of veterans and really try to take care of and learn. And, and that's where you see some of the craziest stuff is in the, in the sub-varsity games. Sure. That's where your rules knowledge kind of gets crazy. Yeah, well, they're not going to put you out in the middle of Bedlam on your first right. week, yeah. right? <laughs> All right. Jeff, man, good to see you. Good to see you, Mark. All Thank right, you for being here. But, yeah, come thanks. out and uh, get involved and get off the couch and get back in the game. We'd love to have you, and there's a lot of people here to help you. So uh, get after it. Ask questions, learn. We'll make it work. Good advice. OSSA.com. Thank you, Mark. All right, thank you. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation, and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off.
Mark Rogers, Lynn Shackelford here on Keeping Squirtle. I, what can you tell the people of, of Squirtle, of Cashin? I mean, like, uh, maybe you should be interviewing me. I don't know. <laughs> is, is that they're they going to learn something new? I don't know if I can get anything new out of you. Yeah, I'm sure you can. There's bound to, bound to be something out there. But uh, Squirtle's great, man. I'll, I'll do anything I can to help promote it. Well, good. It's good to, it's good to have you on. Yeah. So uh, congratulations on all the success. You Appreciate guys are rolling. It. Yeah, yeah. We've, uh, we had a pretty incredible um, group of seniors that just graduated. Yeah. I mean, they were, you know. It didn't matter the sport, football, basketball, baseball. They were they were pretty good. And, and you know, it's kind of probably when we were in school, typical, a lot of those guys played all three sports, you know, in the in the era of, you know, I'm just going to play one or I'm just going to play two. We had, a, we had a handful that did all three, and I think it, it made a huge difference in our ability to have some success. There's some dominant programs at that level. I yeah. mean, and you didn't have to tangle with Dale or, si- or Silo because they're playing yeah. baseball all yeah. the time. But uh, Morrison? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Um, and and that class has done a really nice job. So uh, you can see that that those programs are producing a lot of good athletes. Yeah, um, you know, I I think you can look at if you, when you look at small school and you're trying to determine you know who's, who's who can be successful and, and and why. I think if you look at longevity of coaching, I think a lot of times has a lot to do with that. You know, you look at Morrison, Coach Bells has been there, you know, over 20 years. Right. And, um, you know, you just look around at, at you know Thomas. I know they were down a little bit last year, but Coach Ward's been there for you know forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, th- I think there's something to be said about consistency and and uh, you know get kids to buy in and understand what what they're supposed to do every year. You know, you mentioned you lost such a great senior class. I've kind of found at times that the, the guys that are not getting to play but yet still getting to practice right. against those guys and also experience the tradition and success that a program like Cashin has, they're ready to roll when they get into that spot. It's not it, yeah. it's it's not that they. Uh, the experience is too much of an issue because they've picked up a lot of experience in practice. Do you feel good about your guys this year? Uh, I, I do. We're, we're, we're young and, and we're new in some spots, but um, it, it's it's a little bit like you said. I mean, they've they, they've hopefully they've been around it enough and they kind of understand what the expectation is and they understand that you know why we, we we may not replace Ben Harmon. I mean, I'm, I'm not looking for you know a 10,000 yard quarterback, but I, I got to have somebody that can you know can step in there and, and lead our team and. You know, and do the things that we need to do to be successful with with this group. In the same way with, you know, our wideouts or running backs or whatever our defense. And I, I think our kids have a really good understanding of we're we're going to try to do as good a job as we can do to put them in a position where they can be successful, not where they have to replace somebody that left. So ho- hopefully we can do that. Are you happy with the real changes coming up about splitting Class A and Class Two A? Yeah, I'm ecstatic about it. You know, I was obviously one of the big proponents for that. Um, you and I have talked about this a lot, and I think you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge Cash and Wildcat. Will be for the rest of my life, hopefully, and I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to to make sure that cashin has got an opportunity to be successful and, and to thrive. But I'm, I'm also, f- football is a big deal to me, and it you know it's ingrained in me. And, and and trying to find ways to improve football in Oklahoma, I think, is something that that I'm I'm passionate about, and I think a lot of the guys that were behind the, that split are passionate about it. It's good for football. Um, you know, and you can make all the arguments you want about, you know, watering, watering down state championships and all of these things. But when, when you're giving more kids opportunities to be successful and you're giving more communities opportunities to, to, to have a chance to be successful, and it's not about state championships. It, it should never be about that. It should be about op- – I mean – Increasing participation yeah, is what well, I think it does the, well, the most. That, but, it, I mean, not to – not to throw Blackwell under the bus, but if Blackwell makes the playoffs, it's a huge thing. Right. It's big. There's that's bonfires true. and T-shirts, and it's a, it's a major event, and those kids are going to remember that the rest of their life. Even if they get beat in the first round, that's going to be huge. And to me, that, that's, that's what this is going to allow. It's going to allow more, more communities and more kids opportunities to, ha- to, to taste success, and that's great. Yeah, no, I think that's 100% right. You want to share anything about your conversation uh, with your Mike Gundy earlier today? <laughs> I was just telling him we were going to – he, he, he sits over there every year. Yeah. Last year we told him, you know, he could pull down there and park. And, right. You know, he could sit in his car and watch in the end zone and nobody would mess with him. But uh, I told him the same thing. And then we we talked a little politics. And, nice. You know, you know, talked some small school, big school stuff. But Co- Coach Gundy's great. Yeah. I mean, he really is. Most, one of those down-to-earth, you know, he's got he's got no reason to talk to me. But we sat over there and chatted for 25 minutes. That that's a, I was going to text you and tell him he probably <laughs> taking up a lot of his time. Uh, what do you listen to music-wise right now? Uh, you know, Turnpike's back, so yeah. you're, you're not a big Red Dirt guy, are no, you? No, I mean, a little bit. I would go see them. I yeah. just can't get a ticket. They're really expensive. I I mean, actually, well, so, my, I don't know if I told you this, my daughter's a big competitive dancer. Okay. Okay, so, and she had a recital 
the weekend that they were in Red Rocks. All so right. we're at the uh, district baseball tournament, I think it was, or regional, regional baseball tournament. Cash and guy comes in and is talking to our superintendent uh, from Amber Pocas. Anyway, long story short, he had four extra tickets to the Sunday concert what? at Red Rocks. Really? So he's like, you want to go? Yeah. So I turned him down because, you know, my, my daughter's got a dance recital that Sunday. All right. Well, after the recital's over with or whatever, I told Landry, I was like, you know, I, I could have. Turnpike came on the radio or something, and she's like, Daddy, are you going to see them in concert? I was like, well, I could have went to Red Rocks and watched them, but I told the guy no. And she was like, why? I said, because your dance recital was that Sunday. She was like, you're an idiot. You should have gone. <laughs> I'm like, hey, you know, sadly that information could have helped me a couple weeks ago. So you didn't go? I didn't go, no. Are, are, are you campaigning right now for Dad of the Year? <laughs> I mean, like, you're the leader in the clubhouse in June. That, yeah. was, that was an unbelievable ticket. Yeah, I know, I know. He was just did the guy from this. Ampo know the band? Uh, no, he. I don't, he said he said he only got him for like eighty five dollars. I don't know how or, wh- or what what happened. Yeah. so he could get him. I think it was you know they they added a a show. It was supposed to just be a Saturday, and then they added the Sunday deal. But yeah, no, I'd go in a heartbeat. They got a show tonight here at the Diamond. You know, Pecos and the Rooftops. Really? Yeah, you like them? Yeah, yeah, that, that'd probably be good. Yeah, probably oh, good I now. think it'd be good. I yeah. can't go. Are you? Are you <laughs> do you have a dance recital tonight? I don't have a dance recital tonight. You should no. go. That's some quality red dirt. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we expect another state championship this year. I mean, what's uh, where should I rank you in the preseason? I always ask you that question. Uh, yeah, I lean you on do. you. Um, we we got some work to do. I mean, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm pretty honest when it comes. You 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 are fairly honest. Yeah. Uh, there are guys out there like like Phil Coons who yeah. you played in the championship game a couple yeah. of times. He's never honest. No, he always. Yeah, the first be year first year yeah. I did my magazine at Tuttle. Uh, I think I had him ranked sixth or something like that. He probably screamed at his team for being so bad, yeah. uh, and they were um, district you know, champs. Our, our non-district schedule is really tough. Our first two yeah, games are real tough. Um, we, you know, we could we could easily lose both of those. And you know, if we start zero and two, I'm sure the sky will be falling in cashing. But uh, I th- I think by the end of the year, if we can stay healthy and we we can get better. I, you know, I when the playoffs roll around, I, if if we're fortunate enough to be in there, I I, w- I would I would think we got a good chance as anybody. I saw a picture of Matt Hennessy, uh, and he had a bathing suit on <laughs> at the lake, and I would yeah. think he'd probably lose a swimsuit competition losing, and a, yes. a weightlifting contest. And, yep, tattoo competition. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that you know, Matt and I probably don't match up well on, but. Uh, I'll take my I'll take my ch- my chances on on the sideline against him. Well, hey, that's awesome. You guys uh, had two really memorable playoff games, yeah. so I think it's cool because I love seeing teams, you know, challenge get get that bus ride experience, yeah. uh, or one of the teams does, you know. So I think that's awesome that you guys are playing each other. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, Matt and I have gotten to know each other pretty well over the last couple of years, just because we've played and you know running each other at you know clinics or whatever. And um, he, he's a good guy, you know. I mean, I, th- I think there's a lot of people that you know see Matt and have, have an opinion of him, but, you know, he's he's a great football coach and does an excellent job, and, I mean, he's 100% committed to wherever he's at. Yeah. Um, so, no, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to go up there and, and play them again. Uh, we've we, we tried to do it before, and we never could get it kind of worked out, so it was it was nice to be able to do that. I'd say he probably coordinated maybe the best defense I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, the Legion of Doom. Yeah, yeah. 97 Jinx. Yeah, pretty they, good, so he's been a very successful yeah, coach. They were pretty good. Thanks, Shaq. Yeah, you bet. Good job, man. Yeah, Go thanks. see the – Go see Turnpike. I'm Go get, a, get in there. I know. <laughs> yeah. See you. All right. Is it time for your school or business to purchase a new phone system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today. Welcome to Keeping Score. Mark Rogers here with Tucker Bernard. Now the... uh Director of Football Operations for yeah. Stillwater High School. Yeah, that's what Shaq that? told me. That's a pretty good title, that's man. Great stuff. That's that's pretty cool. Um, you guys got some really impressive skill kids returning. Of course, uh, Gage, a quarterback who looks like he's throwing the deep ball pretty well here today. So, how yeah. do you feel about the season? Yeah, feel feel real good about the season. Uh, you know, you mentioned Gage. He's a big kid. You know, is almost six four now, two ten, um, huge arm. Uh, and uh, and got some guys that can that can really do something out there. I mean, uh, you know, a couple a couple of injuries right now that that are hurting us. But I mean, you know, uh, Noah Noah Roberts is is a big guy for us right now. Heston Thompson, uh, another big one. Julius Talley, um, uh, a lot of those guys, man, they run great routes and and uh, have great hands. So you're moving from west to east this year. What do you feel about that? 
Yeah, I mean, it's good. I mean, that's that's uh, when I when I came here 11 years ago, that's where we were at. So, um, you know, kind of going back home to some degree. I mean, that's that's uh, traditionally Stillwater has has really kind of always been an east side, right. you know, east side school. Um, and uh, we've only been doing that for the last, you know, eight years or so. We're, we're back west. So um, it'll be nice. It'll be nice. Be fun to, to go see some get, see some new guys. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to write up some of the top non-district games in the state. You guys are playing Greenwood, Arkansas. You coached in Arkansas a little bit. That's a great program. So that should be a great way to open up the year. Yeah. Yeah. I was really excited about that. You know, when I was at, when I was at Shiloh Christian um, in Arkansas, we played Greenwood. Uh, week one every year, and uh, it was always a battle. I mean, they're a great program. We got to play on ESPN a couple of times and, and uh, do all that. I think they've won 10 championships in the last 20 years. Yeah, they're know? good. So, right. uh, they, they, they do an outstanding job over there, and we're excited to start out that way. Yeah, that'll be a big challenge there. So um, you guys have been rolling um, and had you know several big clashes with Bixby. <laughs> they're moving up to the 6A Division One. How do you think they'll fare in that uh, in that class, I think they'll be just fine. Yeah, <laughs> I think they'll be just fine. Uh, uh, Co- Coach Montgomery does an outstanding job, and and uh, they've had some they've had some great talent. Um, but uh, you know, I, I think you can look and see it's not they they haven't had just tons of Division One you know big time Power Five football players. They've got some. Don't don't get me wrong, but um, they're uh, they're doing a lot with um, you know. I, I don't want this to sound bad. It's uh, you know kind of an average an average kid, average high school kid. They're doing a great job in the weight room. They're developing those guys. Um, they come out and and uh, they're they're so strong and so physical. Um, they're they're gonna they're gonna have a great team, I'm sure. You got a pretty nice beard going there. Did you just think about going back home, maybe to Osage County and being an extra? <laughs> That movie they were filming. Yeah, over that'd be that'd be good. I get my suspenders and yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I don't, they didn't ask me. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it'd be fun to hang out with Leo. I don't think the pay is necessarily that good for the extras, but that <laughs> right. might be fun. I'm uh, used for to the, the day, pay. Right? I'm used to the pay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, that that was uh, I th- that's a big deal for uh, for Pahuska, I know. Yeah, so, but yeah. um, anyway, thanks, Tucker. Yeah, good to man. see you, man. Yeah, congratulations on all your success. I appreciate it. At Maple's Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people. And our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back, always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples, Nicks, and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. Keeping Scordell with Justin Jones, the head coach at Norman North. And uh, you guys have looked good out here so far. I like your quarterback. Yeah, you know, Cam's done a great job. Uh, you know, just like we talked about earlier, he's just coming back and, and being the backup guy. But really since the end of last season until now, he's just taking it on his shoulders to, to really press. Um, you know, and I think a lot of being a quarterback is about making sure you create some continuity with, with those receivers that you have. And uh, Cam does a great job with that, but also – you know, really helping our defensive guys out. So Cam's Cam's another coach on the field. I mean, high, high football IQ, really, really good at what he does. And, you know, his is just getting seat time. And, and so that's what these tournaments are great for. It gives them some, some live reps. It gets some situations. And uh, so far, so good. Yeah, Cam Sixkiller, uh, quarterback at Norman North. Um, Chapman McCowan, I mean, have you ever coached against or coached a kid with that type of ability to make people miss well and that's his thing he you know he's undersized but uh, he's so fast and uh, he's so strong that uh, he just in one-on-one matchups he's a nightmare and so we, it's certainly uh, we're glad he's wearing our colors because I, I would hate to defend him but uh, you know that's what chap does he, he's he's really showcasing some things today out here in space uh, catching the football and, and creating some matchups against defenses that we can win and uh, you know so he's much more than just a running back and I think for us and especially for him at the next level um, I think you'll see him split out a little bit more doing some of that but uh, yeah he's having a great day and uh, you know but that's what we expect from him he's a, he's a big time player well I, I think you always are, are taught in football in the mind sees big strong physical but his wrestling background and his agility Agility is also a very important part of football and speed that sometimes you really don't measure as much as you might. Well, and it, it makes it really tough. You know, he, he really uses his size to his advantage because he, he, he's real shifty, but he understands how to sink hips. And, you know, he's a small target. And, uh, you know, so a lot of teams miss on him just because they can't catch him or, uh, you know, they, they, they get too high on him. And he uses that to his advantage. And so he certainly knows his body, knows how to play, but uh, does an exceptional job with it. Facilities here are beautiful. 
Uh, you got to love the way. I mean, you guys, locker room is uh, impressive and got an indoor facility here. So you got to be happy with that. Yeah, no, our uh, our district does a great job, you know, uh, for what we have. And, and, you know, really, this is a practice facility for us uh, we, since we share a stadium. But, uh, you know, our guys are, I, I tell them all the time, they're spoiled. You know, they got a great weight room, a great locker room. I wish I would have had this uh, in college, you know. And uh, But, uh, you know, again, that's a credit to our community, credit to our, uh, our school district and uh, putting first class facilities out there. Is the level of competition rising on the West? side it seems like teams are being able to play a little bit more with some of the guys from the east you guys are going to play Bixby this year uh, which will be a big test uh, for you all but it does seem like the level of play over here and the resources are getting up on that level well I think that's what you see I I think we're catching up Um, I I think that gap is narrowing a little bit Um, but you know I I think you look at Union I mean they just raised the bar even more with that new stadium and and things like that but you know it's an arms race and uh, you know for us we try not to to make any excuses on this side at the end of the day football is football and you got to play it no matter what and and, uh, you know for us I, I think we, you know, that's why we're going to go to Owasso next week and play them in seven on seven, and we're going to go take every opportunity that we get to go play those guys because I think the more you play them, the less you fear them. Um, you know, and a credit to all those schools over there. They do it right. Um, they're they're a well-oiled machine. Uh, all five or six of those schools, and so uh, for us, that you know, we're just trying to eliminate excuses and, and put ourselves in a position that we can go play with them. How are you guys in the trenches? Uh, good. You know, that's where we, we've got some some question marks that, uh, you know, we, we lost some some offensive linemen, especially last year, the year before, graduated a bunch. And so uh, return two, we got Harrison Utley um, that will return, is, is getting a lot of uh, Division One looks. And, and Bryce Christian will be another uh, guy up front on the offensive line. But got to find the other three. Uh, we've got the pieces, I think. But, again, it's going to be about seat time and experience. You do anything for those guys that they don't get out to be out here and shine in this Fancy seven on seven stuff. Where where are the big guys? Well, they're out here. Uh, they're probably over there in the shade, probably eating hot dogs. Is what I'm guessing. <laughs> that's not <right. laughs> that's not fair. Uh, yeah, those guys we got to we got to get something to, to uh, showcase them during the summer too, not yep, just pad a team camp. So uh, appreciate it, Justin. Thanks for your time, man. Yeah, Good thanks, luck this Mark. year. Appreciate it. Good thanks to for talk to you. Too. Yeah. Yep. Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. Keeping Scordle, Mark Rogers, Robert Bernard, Fairview Yellow Jackets. You guys had a great season last year. We did. We did. Uh, we'd been down a couple years before that, but uh, got a good young group in there uh, and did. We'd had a, a really good year. Yeah, and coming down here today, 7-on-7, seven seven, it's a little bit of a bus ride. I used to make the, the bus ride out to Fairview from Blackwell. So you get to see a lot of pretty country in between here and Norman. You do, you do. It was a pretty good ride, but it's not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Uh, tell me a little bit about Class A this year. Who are some of the contenders and teams that you guys uh, are looking to uh, compete against? Uh, I think you still have the same same guys at the top. you got Ringland, you got Cashin. You know, those two have been in the finals the last three years. Until somebody beats them, I, I have a hard time putting anybody in front of them. I think Tonkwall is going to be tough again. Uh, I think we could be up there um, out in our district, Hooker, Texoma. Those guys are, are going to still be pretty good. So uh, I think it's wide open. I think it would be competitive. You're kind of on that cusp where a lot of years you're going to be sent west with all of those teams. Uh, sometimes you might get fortunate and play some teams that are a little bit more in northwest Oklahoma. That's kind of your advantage. Do you have to prepare differently when you get on that bus for a long ride? I think uh, I think our kids are so used to it now. It, it doesn't really bother them. We usually try to break the trip up and – and stop in a Woodward or somewhere, a Laverne, and, and we'll do some walkthroughs out there. So I think our kids are just so used to it now uh, that it doesn't really bother us, which is also good in the playoffs. You know, you have to take that trip to eastern Oklahoma for some reason or something like that. So I think our kids are just used to it. Yeah. All right, you're like my brother from another mother, man, because we were talking over here about going to all these stadiums and you got all these pro games. Uh, uh, so seeing a bunch of different college stadiums, give me two or three of the ones that you like the best. Definitely Oregon. Yeah. Oregon's got to be up there. Uh, they have a waterfall in their office. Did you see that? I didn't get to go in the office. Okay, I didn't okay. Get to go All in the right. office. Uh, Alabama was a good one. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, Florida State's kind of like a castle to me. It, it, it was pretty cool. But Clemson, I'm a big Clemson fan, big Dabo fan. So uh, definitely to get to see that rock that they touch and run down the hill, that was pretty cool. Now, are you a Cowboys fan? I am. Okay. 
Dallas Cowboys. Right. right. Yes. Uh, yes. Well, Let's get that. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. So you've been to see the Cowboys play in several uh, yes, pretty impressive road venues. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, to Philadelphia. Right. Been to Philadelphia. Been to Lambeau. Wouldn't trade that one. That one's the best one so far. Right. Uh, so what's your prediction for the Cowboys this year? Uh, Super Bowl. Always. Super every Bowl? year. Super Bowl. You got Dak in the My top five My wife laughs at me every time I say it, but it's Super Bowl. You know, I picked them to win. I picked them to win the Super Bowl a couple years ago, and I was uh, they didn't make the playoffs. It was a laughing stock. I got, <laughs> yeah, got grief. That's all usually season. how it happens. Yeah. That's usually how it happens. All right. Well, best of luck, man. Appreciate uh, it. It's good sitting down talking to you. Yeah. Appreciate right, it. Care. Thank you. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Welcome to Keeping Scordle. You like that name? Yes, sir. Love you, it. Really? Yeah, I've been out here about five years in a row, so okay. kind of used to it. Well, that's the new name of this blog that I'm doing, Keeping Scordle. I'm not sure it's a good name. So if you can come yes, up sir. with a better name, then you well, know. You, sure. It works, man. Okay, all it right. Works. If you say it works, then, yes, sir. then it works. Uh, how are you doing, Robert? Doing pretty good. You know, um, it's hot out here. Yeah. But it's an opportunity for our guys to get better. You know, we got we got a new quarterback coming in, you know, and um, – well, we actually have a quarterback battle, so it's a good opportunity for us to get out here and throw and catch. You know, we went against Stillwater the first game, um, and you know what they bring to the table. So it's been some good work out here. You know, even defensively, you know, we lost our defensive coordinator. He resigned, so I'll be stepping into that role again this year. So it's kind of good for me to get back in the mix and kind of get used to the atmosphere of calling, the, actually calling the game again. Yeah, and I know you're DB by trade. So yes, sir. do you prefer the seven-on-seven? Seven? I saw you guys at padded camp. I was pretty impressed. Yes, sir. I, honestly, no. I'm old-fashioned. I mean – I understand 7-on-7 seven seven needs to be done, but I like 11-on-11. 11 11. You know, I think it brings a different atmosphere when you can get after the quarterback. Like we were playing against Stillwater, and, and Gage Gundy has five, se four seconds to throw. I just don't think that's going to happen if we play against him 11-on-11 11 11, because I like to bring pressure. So I understand his purpose, and I understand what it does for the kids, but I'm more 11-on-11 11 11 so I can get after the quarterback a little bit. Yeah, you guys had a great season last year, yes, district sir. champions. Yes, sir. Also beat both teams in the mid Dell, and I don't yes, think sir. that's been done for a long time. So yes, um, how have you – found this year after that have you had some more success recruiting kids to come out and play that may not have played before um honestly it's been you know it, it's been more challenging because you have to keep your players from getting complacent and thinking that they could just show up and win you know we had a lot of success against teams that we haven't had in the past so um our kids are walking around a little bit more confident without which i like but i can kind of feel like it's a hangover a little bit so i'm trying to get get on that in the summer pride and things like that so um, it's been more challenging to get our kids to understand the sense of urgency to win um, like we had last year. But, you know, Dell City's always had talent. So um, we've been really focused on discipline and character development. It's really paid off for us. So I think this year you'll see a more mature team. I don't know if it would be as talented, but it would be more mature and more disciplined. What's it like coaching against all your boys, man? You got to go up against Jake Corbin, yeah. who you played with. You got to go up against uh, Mike Dunn, who you played with. I mean, and those are all big rivalry games. Well, I'm competitive and I like it. You know, uh, I wish we were playing Carl Albert this year. I think it's just fun. I think it's just kind of like Bedlam. You know, uh, when I hear about us not possibly playing Bedlam anymore, I get sick. You know, because that's just what it's about. Football is about competition, about going against you know rivalries that's been in, in place for years. So. I'm excited to play against them. Um, it feels good when you win, honestly, because you get to have those bragging rights. But, you know, I've been telling the kids we beat Midwest City, we beat Carl Albert, now we need to go out to Choctaw because, you know, they're not in Mid-Dale, but they're in that they're vicinity. Close. So I'm old, I'm old school and I like to have those bragging rights. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, but it's also awesome to see the Carl Albert tree. You know, I still spend time with Coach Rose on a weekly basis and to be able to see guys that you played with um, have success, not only as coaches, but as head coaches. It's a privilege and it's a good fraternity that we have going on. Yeah, you guys had a good group there yes, uh, in high school. Um, tell me about your quarterbacks. You said you got a couple of vine there. I thought I haven't seen him as much today throw the football, but I did see him at the padded camp and they both I thought looked really good. Yes, sir. We got, and, and they're both short of stature, and, you know, um, and they make up for their height with their arm. You know, we got DeKalen Gravin. Um, he's also on the basketball team. Um, he plays some corner for us and slot receiver. Um, then we got George Gooseby. Um, he's a junior, and, you know, he hadn't played as much, but, you know, he's a baseball player. He has a good arm. Um, going back to Day Day, he's just elusive. He's one of those kind of kids that always makes up for his height. You know, even when you see him on the basketball court playing point guard, you don't see that height difference like you think you would with a kid that was 5'7". Um, but, you know, I'm excited about it. I think we're going to be able to open up some things a little bit more than we did last year. I think we were more one-dimensional. So I'm excited about 
open it up with their ability to read more coverages and, and just having the arm strength to get it there. And we have a great group of receivers. This is probably the most talent we have since we had Jeff Foreman. So I'm excited about that. And I think Day Day and George will be able to step in either one and take advantage of it. Yeah. Are you guys excited about playing East? Yeah. You know, I grew up playing for Carl Albert. I played this on the west side. I played against the Armores, the Altices. I never played against McAllister. I never played against the uh, Coweetas of the world, Glenpool. So I'm kind of excited just to get different, see different traditions, play against different teams, different towns. I'm excited about that, you know, and that's kind of what I wanted to do. I didn't want to really play the same teams until we see them in the playoffs. So I'm excited about the new challenges. I'm excited about the new cultures that we'll be able to see. Yeah, and Booker T in the non, non-district two, which Yo. is a, a series that you guys have have played. So you, when you say you like competition, I mean, it's reflected on the schedule. You know, I, and I was, I was just speaking to somebody about that this week. I like to keep that going and, you know, call it the Turnpike Bowl. Bowl. You know, those are two great traditional schools that usually have Division One type talent. So I think that's what the fans want to see, and I like that. It's non-district. It gets us prepared for that big games like McAllister, Coweta that we're going to see in district, and I really like that. I think it's been real challenging. It's been back and forth. Um, they're always good, regardless of what players they lose. You know, I've been hearing about them losing players to Jinx and Union every year, and I'm just that's scary to see if they actually keep those guys. But I like the tradition, and we open up with Choctaw, and we play Midwest City after Brooker T. So it's a tough non-district, but, you know, um, learning from Coach Rhodes, he always told me to schedule tough early. And I remember my junior and senior year, we started off one and three, but we won state championships. So I think playing tough non-district gets you prepared for district, and not only that, for the playoffs as well. All right, tell me about Jaden Foreman. Uh, Jaden's, you know, he's been starting for us since he was a sophomore. Um, he's 6'4", 250 pounds. Um, he's committed to Oklahoma State, um, defensive end. Had 12 sacks last year, 40 tackles. Um, did today we got him playing Mike Backer, so that kind of shows the athletic ability he has, and he also plays point guard. So he's a versatile athlete. Um, I think it's going to be a name that people are going to be able to know in Oklahoma for a while because he's going to go up to Stillwater and do some things. So I'm excited about him, and he's a great leader, um, great character, captain. You know, he takes care of his business in the classroom. So I'm excited to see what he's going to do this year, and I'm excited to see him go up to Stillwater. Yeah, Lenny Hatchett, the head coach at Dell City Boys State Champions, you mm-hmm. guys – a lot of your guys play basketball too. Yes, is sir. that something that you guys have a great relationship? That's, I think, Absolutely. always important. Sometimes at bigger schools, you get specialists. Absolutely. I've been in schools in Texas. When I coached in Texas, the football head coach and, and, and head basketball coach wouldn't get along. And it only hurts the kid and it hurts your program in the long run. Uh, we got a great relationship. Um, we both know we need that character development and discipline in our programs because when they leave football, they're, hitting, they're hearing the same things and they're hitting that same platform and getting that same foundation. So we've been able to really coexist and really use the athletes and share, and it's, and it's really showing. You know, the year we had in football last year and, you know, Coach Hatchett winning the state championship the year before and playing it for this year, I think we both are really benefiting from the talent that Dell City has because we're able to share and, and make it happen. Great job, man. Yes, Appreciate it. All right, good Thank to see you. you. Thanks. Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at scordle.com slash stream. Uh, Jaden, you're out here, not a lot, of, this is a lot of little guys out here. I mean, you're out there at middle linebacker. Uh, I assume that this really helps you with your lateral movement. You probably are going to translate as an edge rusher in college, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Um, tell me about Dell City this year. What are your expectations? That's what it takes to go get a state championship. That's our highest goal. Yeah. What, what, what have you learned since starting as a sophomore now that you're going to be a senior? What, what things have you uh, – that's going to make you play your best this year? Uh, really just you got to be tough and just tough with it. It's, it takes a lot of c depth. That's our, like, code names. It's this commitment, discipline, effort, toughness, pride. And that's what we, just, what we go by. Right. And that's what pushes me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys had a great season a year ago, yes, so you're looking to build on that now. You're in a little bit different classification as well. Yes, sir. So you uh, Midwest City game, tell me about that rivalry and what that's like, you know, bragging rights with uh, all the people that you know. And it's just a good game. Like, you know, just to bring everybody in, you know, how we went to, like, elementary and middle school just to play against each other is real good. Yeah. Have you guys had bragging rights all the way up through? Oh, or yes, sir, always. Okay, always. all right. Every day. That's good. Tell me about – I know Oklahoma State right now is just absolutely loaded at that edge position. Yes, uh, they've got some really good players there, Trace Ford. Yes, uh, yeah, also – 
Uh, last year, Colin Oliver made a big impact there. Brock Martin is another good player. Yes, so sir. is that what attracted you to Oklahoma State? Yes, sir. And just really just like the more just outside of sports, it really just attracted me. They help you pursue your dream. Yeah. Yes. What What do you plan on majoring in when you get there? Sports and, medicine. Yeah. Yes, sir. Awesome. So good deal. Well, uh, give me a couple of young guys on your team this year to look out for that we may not know about. Aaron Carter, and Mr. Braylon Adama. And we got a uh, – I forgot his name, no. We got one quarter, a new quarterback. Uh, he's a little freshman. He's good, though. Yeah. I forgot his name. Yeah. Coach Jones would tell us that you guys yes, got sir. competition going there, so yes, that's sir. good. Yeah. Well, hey, it's nice to meet you. Best nice of luck at Oklahoma you. State. Best of luck this year. Thank you. All right, thanks, Jade. At Maple's Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples, Nicks, and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. We're here at Thrill Hall. You're on a blog called Keeping Scordle. Do you like the name of that? Yeah. Okay. Pretty good. You think so? Yeah. Everybody, I don't think everybody's – it was mine. No, but everybody's, really. afraid to, everybody's afraid to say that they don't like it, I think. No, if we didn't like it, we'd just tell you. I mean, okay, you, okay. You don't write a check for us. You told me that you didn't like this, though, so much. I, I told you it was very interesting. It is. Yes. That's not a compliment. That, that's that's a Christmas time. <laughs> that's what that is. Okay. I think it's a good point. I'm going to go home and probably take care <laughs> no, of that a little it. bit today. Keep it. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. It's good. It's good to see you. It's been a while. It has been a long time. Yeah, I think I saw you a couple years ago maybe over at Westmore and did a little team camp activities. Yeah, did a little 7 17 camp. Yeah. So yeah. You, guys are in, Lima camp. you guys are in 5A this year. Yes. Life is tough. Uh, hey, no, what, what is tough is Bixby. I mean, you guys had to do some battles with them going up against them in the playoffs. And, and uh, you know, being reclassified there, I think uh, that class looks pretty wide open to me this year. I, I'm very interested to see how you guys do. Yeah, me too. I mean, like I said, I think 6A2 is wide open. Um, you took three playoff teams out. You took Bixby, who won seven out of the eight. Um, then you took us and Dell City. So there's three playoff teams that – are normally in that are not, not in there anymore, so it opens up the door. Right, uh, no doubt. Tell me a little bit about some of your guys coming back for this year. Well, I'm a best cat. I, I've got a lot of good guys, and we're going to be a, a mixture of youth and and uh, and, and old age. Uh, my senior four-year starter, at D'Angelo Irving, has three offers from the all-military schools. Um, great athlete. Um, he's going to make us go. Uh, we did a look. We came in with a new offense coordinator, Randon Lowe. He's the head coach of Salisaw. Sure. And so we've uh, spread it back out. We're going to be gun because he's such a tremendous athlete that it's going to put people in a bind. You know, if you cover the doubles or the, the 31 set, then it's going to be a box. So we're going to look at the numbers and, and try to get off on it. Randon uh, spent some time at OU, right? Yes, he did. Yeah. So he's got a little of that uh, Lincoln Riley dust on him. Yeah, he's got some Lincoln Riley. He was down at North Texas with uh, Seth. Yeah. Them. That's good. Yes. That's good stuff. Uh, D'Angelo really is kind of a special player. He's been – he's got a lot of snaps for you guys at that position. Yeah. He, uh, he took over spot his freshman year. We were 0-3. And we finished the season four and three with him as a starting quarterback and lost to Bixby in the semi in the, in the first round. The next year we lost him in the semifinals. So he's you know he's got a lot of good seasoning. Uh, he's a tremendous leader. He's a great young man. So uh, you know I think he'll take us. Uh, you know like you'll look at the Bombers this year coming up and you'll see probably four sophomores, three juniors, and four seniors. It's going to be a big mix. Uh, my sophomore class is as big as my junior and senior class combined. So we're we're suited up. I think we're running about 65 in summer pride right now. And we're excited. I mean, 5A, we're going to have to play ball. Those guys play ball. Right. And, you know, with all three Middell schools in there, we're looking forward to that. And we're going to the Southwest, so I get to go back home. You know, I'm from the Carter County originally, so we'll get – Ardmore's actually coming to us, but I'll get to play Ardmore and Duncan and – it's places I've never played games. Well, I was doing some research on that. Funny that you ask. I think Midwest City and Duncan, like 1960, last yeah. time they played, Altus is about the same. But there is some history there going way back to some of the, some, some of those games. And the same with Ardmore. They've had some meetings before. But that's that's good stuff. I mean, and, and, you know, hey, you're right. 5A is not easy. It's not no. like, oh, well, you know. Um, so I think that there's going to be a lot of competition in that class this year. It, was it? Was it your liking that the Middell schools would be in different districts? Would yeah, you? it's for the best. I mean, because I'm going to play them anyway. Week one, I play Carlisle, but week two, I got Dell City. And, you know, so we're going to see each other in the, in the preseason. But I, I, I don't think it was fair for all three of us because we're playoff teams. You know, and we expect to be in the mix when it's all said and done. So sending us all to a different district, that way we won't see each other until later, hopefully. 
Uh, we talked a lot about offense, but your defense is usually pretty good. Yeah, my, I expected to be right there, Royce. It was a little disappointment last year. I mean, we only gave up 19 points a game. We just didn't score enough points with the offense we had, and that's why we had to make a change. But, um, you know, Coach Tyler K, my defense coordinator, he came over from Dell City, but he's done a great job for me. Kids understand. Um, we, You know, we always play good defense at, at Midwest City High School, so we're going to try to keep that up. And, you know, what I ask my offense coordinators is to score 28 points a game, and we should give up 28, and we should win a lot of football games. That's good. Yeah. Any good music you're listening to lately? You know, I'm very, no, Kane Brown. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah. Okay. No old school? No old school lately. Okay. All right. Good. Kane Brown's good. He's pretty good. This whole the whole world's turning into a red dirt world, man. It's just well, it's not just, totally, but we are in Oklahoma, you know. It's that's true. Like people start complaining about the weather. It's like, are we not in Oklahoma? Is it not July? <laughs> what the heck are we talking about? That's what it's always been. Uh, any good Netflix? No, not home. Been watching College World Series and Softball World Series. I yeah, mean, it's taking our time. Everybody's watching that. Yeah, it's, just it's great. Been fun. I mean, OU it was great to. Man, they they lit it up the other day. Right. Yeah. So. They speaking of that, man, that is a team that is that has really bought into their coach. Yes. You know, I heard Skip talking last night about uh, every pitch matters and the at bats, and they don't. I watched the game against A uh, and M yesterday, and it was like they maybe had three or four guys swing at bad pitches the whole game. Yes. That's crazy. I mean, they're playing great team ball. I think, like I said, I think they believe and they believe in each other. I mean, I picked up to, you know, I hadn't caught much OU baseball until uh, the Big 12 championship, and I'm like, it's a game I can watch. Sometimes it moves so slow. I'm True. Like, I can go grow flowers or something. But, you know, they get up there to throw the ball quick. They, they make good hits. I mean, it's a very interesting game. So, I'm, you know, they're the state school left, so let's go we'll get it done. All right. You got more gray than me. I do because I'm a lot older than you. <laughs> Thanks, <Ralph. laughs> Good to see you, too. Take you care. Bet.